Hello and welcome to CQMS 110, Applied Mathematics for Business. I am Dr. Pauline Fu. In this lecture, we will talk about real numbers, negative and positive power numbers, power of numbers and the properties radicals, rationalization, and operations with radicals, simplifying expressions with variables and radicals, decimal numbers, rounding decimals, repeated decimals, ratios and proportions, as well as their applications, percentages, finally, We'll have an example about application to business. Um, the real numbers, this is a picture of the real number. All these numbers are the real number. We use letter R represent real number. Real number has rational numbers. The rational numbers we use Q represent rational numbers and the rational numbers can be further divided by integers so Z capital Z integers and the natural numbers capital N natural numbers. Irrational numbers, it is I. Okay, so if a number, let's say number two, number two is a natural number, yes. Number two is also an integer. Number two is also a rational number. Number two is also a real number. Okay, so the real number has two parts. One is rational number Q, and the other is irrational number I. Some properties of real numbers. For the additive properties, we have associative. So A plus B plus C equal to A plus B plus C. For example, 2 plus 3, bracket plus 5, is the same as 2 plus bracket 3 plus 5. So, commutative, A plus B equal to B plus A. So 3 plus 7 equal to 7 plus 3. Identity. If you add 0 to a real number, it is the same as this real number plus 0. It is the same as the real number itself. Okay. For all A in R, R represent real number. And zero is the only element in real number with this property. Okay. Inverse. For any real number A in for any real number A, negative A is inverse. So when you have a real number A, the inverse is negative A. You add them together, you get zero. So for example, two plus, the inverse of two is negative two. And the result you get zero. Another example would be negative three, it is a real number. The inverse of negative three is a positive three. 
If you add these two numbers together, you still get zero. So now let's look at multiplication properties. Associative a plus b bracket multiplied by c equal to a multiplied by bracket b or not plus, sorry. a multiplied by b bracket multiplied by c equal to a multiplied by bracket b multiply c. For example, 2 multiplied by 3, I use dot represent multiplication, bracket multiply by 4. It is the same as 2 multiply by bracket 3 multiply by 4. And the final result would be 24. Uh, commutative A times B equal to B times A. Okay, so 4 times 5 equal to 5 times 4 equal to 20. Identity, one times any real number equal to a real number times one equal to the real number itself. And one is the only element in real number with this property. So inverse for multiplication property. If A is a real number and A does not equal to zero, one over A is the inverse. Okay, it is a multiplicative inverse. So before we also have the inverse, that is for ad addition property. So that is additive inverse, additive inverse. And this one, multiplicative inverse, they are different, okay? Um, so if you have any real number A, multiply by it is inverse. The result is the inverse multiplied by the real number and equal to one. For example, three, the multiplicative inverse of three is one over three. If you time these two numbers together, you get one. Another example would be four, one over four. One over four is a real number. The multiplicative inverse of one over four is a four. If you multiply by those two numbers together, you get one. So last property, it is a distributive properties. A multiply bracket B plus C equal to A multiply by B plus A multiply by C. Or bracket A plus B multiply by C equal to C. A multiply by C and then B multiply by C add them together. Exponents, it is negative and positive power of numbers and the properties. Uh, there are many laws of exponents. So if you have a raised to power m, multiply by a raised to power n, it is the same as a raised to power m plus n. For example, two raised to power three, multiply by two raised to power four. It is equal to two raised to power three plus four, seven. So next, next one, a raised to power m divided by a raised to power n equal to a raised to power m minus n. 
So the same example would be so two raised to power three divided by two raised to power four equal to two raised to power three minus one equal to negative one. Okay, two raised to power negative one. And here we have a number raised to negative number. So for example, two raised to negative one equal to one over two raised to positive one equal to one over two. And over here we have two raised to power negative one using this law, we get this result is one over two. So negative one, ne next, a raised to power m bracket raised to power n equal to a raised to power m times n. So for example, a raised to power three bracket raised to power four equal to two raised to power three times four, 12. So next one, a times b bracket raised to power n equal to a raised to power n multiplied by b raised to power n. For example, two times three, two times three raised to power four equal to two raised to power four times three raised to power four. Any real number a raised to power zero, it is one, except a, a is not equal to zero. Okay, so for example, two raised to power zero, it is one. Okay. Uh, one over three raised to power zero, it is one. And over here we have a raised to power m over a raised to power n equal to one over a raised to power n minus m. For example, three raised to power four over three raised to power five equal to one over three raised to power five minus four. and equal to one over three. And this one is obvious. So for example, uh, this one here. So two over three raised to power five equal to two raised to power five divided by three raised to power five. Okay. Um, uh, this one is the fractional exponents. Okay, so for example, Uh, we can write a fractional exponent with radical notation. For example, a raised to power one over n, this is a fractional exponent. How can we write it to radical notation? It is the same as the nth root of a. Okay. For example, um, four, raised to power one over two. It is the same as square root of four and equal to two. Next example, eight raised to power one over three
equal to the third root h and we know h is the same as 2 raised to power 3 then third root and this 3 and this 3 cancelled out so we get number 2 So generally speaking, if you have a raised to power m over n, you get a raised to power m take n's square root. So for example, eight raised to power four over five, it is equal to eight raised to power four and then fifth root. Okay. There are some other examples you can see here. Okay. Um, radicals multiplication. So square root of five multiply by square root of 2 equal to square root of 5 multiplied by 2. I use dot to represent multiplication equal to square root of 10. Okay. And uh, other examples, so square root of 4 multiplied by uh, square root of 12 equal to 4 multiplied by 12 takes square root. Okay. Uh, because 4 is a perfect square, and we can write down further divide 4. Four equal to 2 times 2, 12 equal to 3 times 2 times 2. We can write down here. Okay, so 4 multiplied by 2 takes square root is 2. This part, it is 2. Okay, and this part is also 2. We only left square root of 3. Okay. This is the final result. Next example. Okay. And there are many ways to do this problem. One way you can uh, just do this one. Because 8 and 27 are perfect cubes. So you can further 8 equal to 2 times 2 times 2. That is 8. 27 is a 3 times 3 times 3. Okay. So it is becomes two times three. Why? Because here three two times two times two is the same as two raised to power three, and here is the same as three raised to power three. Okay, and three three cancelled out, you get this two, and this three cancelled out with this three, you get three. So this one is about rationalization. Rationalize the denominator of this expression. The purpose of rationalization is to get rid of the radicals in denominator position. We don't want to see these radicals in the denominator position. Okay, so how do we get rid of it? We multiply by the, the denominator is square seven plus square, uh, square root of seven plus square root of x. We just change the sign of plus to minus. Both numerator 
and denominator multiplied by the same expression that will not change original value. Okay, so we multiply this bracket in both numerator and denominator position. And now we work out for what is the numerator, what is denominator. Okay. And let's see the denominator. We use formula a plus b multiplied by a minus b equal to equal to a square minus b square. Okay, so for denominator, we use this formula. Okay, so we have a uh, uh, square root of seven square minus square root of eight square. So it becomes seven minus eight. That is the denominator. And for numerator, we just multiply four square root x, okay, with square root of seven, you get this one. And then four square root of eight, multiply the next item inside the bracket. And you get negative four, actually, square x times square x, it is x. Okay. For x, then we take away four, and we have square root of seven x minus x. This is the final expression. Common fractions, okay. We know in a fractions, the number on top we call numerator. The number on the bottom we call denominator. If numerator three smaller than denominator seven, we call this fraction is a proper fraction. If numerator seven greater than denominator three, it is an improper fraction. Converting common fractions into decimal form. Nine over eight is a common fraction. To convert to decimal, you just use nine, divide eight, and you get this number. One over three, common fraction, change to decimal. So one divided by three, 0 0.333 forever. So we use this dot, over three means the remaining three followed. Next one, seven over six, the same as seven divide six, it is 1.1666. This six is repeated forever. So we have the dot over the six, representing the repeating sequence. Uh, some textbook using the horizontal bar, so this one they say 0 0.3, there is a little bar over 3, and this one is 1.16, and there is a little bar over 6. Converting mixed numbers to decimal format. Uh, when you converting the mixed numbers, you break up the mixed number into a whole number with the fraction. And then you figure out what is the fra this fraction part into decimal place and come up with the result. So next example, you break up this mixed uh, numbers into a whole number with a fraction, and then you work out with this fraction, come out with the result. Similar with the last one, okay, and you break up with the whole number plus a fraction, work out for the fractions, come out with the final result. So the rounding. In business world, if there is money involved, we usually uh, round to the nearest cent. 
for example, 7.384, if we round to nearest cent, we need to keep two decimal places. So we look at this number here. If this number is smaller than five, we just drop this number. So it becomes 7.38. Now let's look at the next one, 7.385. If this number, the third digit, the third decimal places is a five or above five, we round this up, okay? So it becomes 0 0.39, 0 0.39. So next number, if you keep two decimal places, if you want to keep two decimal places, look at the third decimal. So you dropped. So the result is just 12.94. Last one, you want to keep just two decimal places. You look at the third decimal. This round up, it becomes 0.33. Okay. Ratios. Um, there are many formats uh, can express ratios. One is used English word two, so five to two. And uh, we sometimes also use the column five to two. And we also use fractions five over two. Or we use decimals 5.20. And finally, we can use a percentage. So 250%. So those are express the ratios. And when we compare more than two numbers or quantities, we usually use the column expression. Okay. For example, 5k to 3, 5kg to 3kg to 2kg. Okay. And usually we drop the units of measure. It just becomes five to three to four. Reducing ratios to lowest term. So let's take a look at this example. 80 to 35. This is not lowest term because 80 can be expressed by 16 multiplied by five and 35 is the same as seven multiplied by five. They both has five, so we drop those five. So the final result just have 16 left, 16 to seven. And this is the lowest term. You cannot further reduce it. And we call number five is common factor. Let's look at this example, 81 to 54 to 27. So we know 81 can be expressed by three multiplied by 27. 54, two multiplied by 27. And 27 is one multiplied by 27. We have 27 as a common factor. So we drop 27 and only have a three to two to one. Okay. Equivalent ratios in higher terms. Um, Higher term ratios is used for eliminate decimals. For example, if you have 1.25 to 3.75 to 7.5, if you want to eliminate decimals, we use high term ratios. So first, we multiply every items by 100. So 1.25 times 100, 125, Three times seven five multiplied by one hundred, three hundred seventy five. Seven point five multiplied by one hundred, seven hundred fifty. 
And then we know 125 is 1 times 125. 375, 3 times 125. 750, 6 times 125. So we have 125 as common factor. We drop it. So the final result just have 1, 2, 3, 2, 6. Proportions. When two ratios are equal, they form a proportion. For example, 2 to 3 is the same as 4 to 6. They are the proportion. x to 5 equal to 7 to 35. Okay. Remember the proportion can also write down the ratio. For this example, we use the ratio format here. Oops. Okay, we are here. But now we are talking about this one. X to five, I can write down this format. And seven to 35, I write down this format. So if you want to solve for X, you use cross multiplication. So x multiplied by 35 equal to 5 multiplied by 7. So x multiplied by 35 equal to 5 multiplied by 7. Usually we write down the number first, then the letter. So this one is also the same as 35x equal to 5 multiplied by 7 is 35. So what is x? x equal to 35 over 35 equal to 1. So in proportion problem, if you have one unknown, you can solve it. Okay. Next, let's solve this one here. This one we cannot solve it because it is not an equation. You do not have the equal sign. It is just an example of proportion. Okay, same as here. Okay. Um, so this is, is an example using proportions. After Edwin pumped seven gallons of gasoline, the display showing the price is $15.33. When he finished pumping the gasoline, the display read $35.04. How many gallons did he pump? Okay. So we can use proportion to solve it. When he pumped seven, the price is $15.33. The question is, how much gallon he pumped when the price is 35.04? You set up this equation for proportion, and then you use cross multiplication. So 15.33 multiplied by x, equal to 7 multiplied by 35.04. Okay. And then you further solve this equation. So how do you get x? You use 245.28 divided by 15.33, you get x. Okay. So last item on today's lecture is Application, pay your salary. Um, salary usually on monthly or yearly base. Uh, monthly salary, you can get paid every month or uh, twice a month. So personal or yearly salary basis may get paid monthly or 
semi monthly or two weeks. Special schedules are used by some uh, company to pay their teachers. If salary is paid weekly or every two weeks, the year is assumed to have 50 weeks. So now let's look at this specific example. Mac receives monthly salary, 2080 paid semi-monthly. Mac's regular work week is 37.5 hours. Any hours over 37.5 hours in a week are over time and are paid at time and a half regular pay. So for example, every hour, if you are paid $12, if you have one hour over time, so that over time will be paid $18. Okay. During the first half of October, Mike worked 7.5 hours over time. Question one, what is Mike's hourly rate of pay? Question two, what are his gross earnings for the pay period ending October 15? Okay. So we know every month, Mac get this amount. There are 12 months in a year. So the annual salary for Mac is every month multiplied by 12 is 24,960. And we also assume a year has a 52 week. So what is the weekly earnings? Use the annual, yearly income divided by 52. You get every week 480. And because Mac work 37.5 a week, so every hour he will earn $12.80. So we answered the first question, what is hourly rate for Mac? And the second question, what is his gross earnings for the paid pay period ending October 15? Remember, Mike worked 7.5 hours over time. If you are working over time, you are paid at a time and a half regular pay. So the regular pay for Mike is $12.80 per hour, okay? So over time is regular half, one and a half of this amount. So over time is paid 12.8 plus half of 12.8, okay? So this number should be 12.8 so for every hour time, for every hour over time, he will get 12.8 plus 6.4. 6.4. And the result would be 19.2 dollars for our time. Every hour he get 19 dollar 20 cents okay. and how many hours he overworked he overworked is a 7.5 okay this is another way uh, here is another way so this number is a 19.2 okay 19.2 19.4 let me double check. Okay. So that is uh, the end of lecture two. Um, what we did in lecture two, 
we did the real number, we use letter R, and the real number has rational numbers. Rational numbers and irrational numbers, I. Rational number Q has two parts. One is natural number, and the other is uh, Uh, integers. Actually, integers also include um, natural numbers. Negative and positive power of numbers, something like 2 raised to power 3, this is positive power of numbers. 2 raised to power negative 3, this is a negative power of numbers. And their properties. Radicals, rationalization. If you have a two over square root of three plus four, and you want to get rid of the square in denominator position, you need radical rationalization. What you do, both numerator and denominator multiply by square root of three minus four. Square root of three minus four. And you simplify numerator and denominator. The final result is that the denominator will not have the square root. Uh, simplify expressions with variables and radicals. This is also an example of simplify. Uh, decimal numbers, uh, 3.45 is decimal numbers, okay, it has two decimal places. And how do you round decimal uh, numbers? Repeated decimals, we use either dot or little bar over the repeating numbers. Uh, ratios and the proportions as well as their applications, we did that example. Okay. And uh, percentages, it is a special format of ratio, okay? Um, it is a denominator, you have 100. Okay, 100, for example, numerator, you have 40. So this is 40%. And lastly, we did an example of a payroll in business world. That's all for lecture two. Thanks for watching. <laughs>